Shall we jump in? All right, we, I, we left at a good point. Let's go. Who's got it? Quick. Where are we starting? Oh, cool. No, I didn't bring any extra time. Mm -hmm. You need to start. Anyone with an extra pen? Yes. She would like that one. Oh, Regina, did you go away? I don't know. You need an extra pen? Yes. Thanks. There you go. And we want to play with the difference between the Thomas Taylor and any other translation since uh, we were doing well last time. Yeah, it's, You're uh, sniffing. It's, I am? Yes. I was sniffing. Uh, yeah. I got a bigger belt than this. We'll open it up some more. <laughs> open some more. I think we finished heaven, didn't we? At uh, 31 B or C, yes or no? I think we stopped at 29 B. Sir? 29 B. 29 B. That's right. I think he said 29 B. I don't know why he wouldn't speak up. <laughs> No, we wanted to say 30. Okay. Then I presume uh, we're starting on Let Us Now State. Everyone there? 29E or B, did you say? B. B. I wanted to go to E, see. Page 55. <laughs> okay. Did someone say they want to read? Okay, I will. So, you're looking up, do you want to read? Loud? Sure. Clear? Let us now state the cause, wherefore he that constructed it, constructed becoming and the all. Mm. He was good. Hold it. Oh. I thought we were at 29B. Did I? Did I uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Again, if these premises be granted, it is wholly necessary that this cosmos should be a copy of something. Now in regard to every matter, it is most important to begin at the natural beginning. Accordingly, in dealing with a copy and its model, we must affirm that the accounts given will themselves be akin to the diverse objects which they serve to explain. Those which deal with what is abiding and firm and discernible by the aid of thought will be abiding and unshakable. And insofar as it is possible and fitting for statements to be irrefutable and invincible, they must in no wise fall short thereof, whereas the counts of that which is copied after the likeness of the model and is itself a likeness will be analogous thereto and possess likelihood. For as being is to become, becoming, so is truth to belief. Wherefore, Socrates, if in our treatment of a great host of matters regarding the gods and the generation of the universe, we prove unable to give accounts that are always in all respects self-consistent and perfectly exact, Will not thou be surprised? Rather, we should be content if we can furnish accounts 
that are inferior to none in likelihood, remembering that both I, who to or who speak, and you who judge are but human creatures, so that it becomes us to accept the yeah. likely count. Well, just do that one part. Yes, yeah, sorry, okay. I got lost. Right, stop it. Excellent time ends. Okay. Um, what's the realm of the logos? Or in this text, it has um, by the aid of thought. Those which deal with what is abiding, firm, and discernible by the aid of the Logos will be abiding and unshakable. And insofar as it's uh, possible and fitting for statements to be irrefutable and invincible, they must in no wise fall short thereof. Whereas the accounts, going the other way around, that which is copied after the likeness of that model and is itself a likeness will be analogous thereto, thereto and possess likelihood. Then he leaves with the analogy, being is to becoming, as truth is to believe. What does Thomas do? I'm interested in those terms. Well, I'll just put it up here first. Uh, uh, choice of terms. Uh, Thomas? Okay. But to describe uh, pardon me for a moment. Page? <clears throat> uh, 431. Okay. Jump in. But to describe its origin according to nature is the greatest of all undertakings. In this manner, then, we must distinguish concerning the image and its exemplar. As words are allied to the things of which they are the interpreters, hence it is necessary when we speak of that which is stable and firm and intellectually apparent, that our reasons should be in like manner, stable and immutable, and as much as possible irreprehensible with every perfection of a similar kind. But that when we speak concerning the image of that which is immutable, we should employ only probable arguments, which have the same analogy to the former as a resemblance to its exemplar. And indeed, as essence is to generation, so is truth to faith. We must not wonder, therefore, O Socrates, since many things are asserted by many concerning the gods and the generation of the universe, if I should not be able to produce the most approved and accurate reasons on so difficult a subject. But you ought to rejoice if it shall appear that I do not employ reasons less probable than others, at the same time remembering that I who discourse and that you, who are my judges, possess the human nature in common, so that you should be satisfied if my assertions are but assimilative of the truth.
must not wonder, right? You must not wonder, therefore, O Socrates, since many things are asserted by many concerning the gods and the generation of the universe, if I should not be able to produce the most approved and accurate reasons on so difficult a subject. But you ought to rejoice if it shall appear that I uh, do not employ re reasons less probable than the others. And at the same time remembering that I discourse and that you are my judges possess the human nature in common, that's what we share. Um, this is rather strange. Um, Believe. We've got something rather important. Um, <clears throat> now, these are pretty different, but it depends upon what background a person has. And these two are different, depending on the background. And thank goodness we have the middle terms that are pretty close. Uh, generation of becoming, these two are close. Um, This is quite interesting. Um, accounts of that which is copied after the likeness of that model will itself be a likeness. Will be analogous hereto and possess likelihood. Uh, huh. really curious because um, um, notice the form that he has it in. See, he's taking the alternando. Right? Alternando is taking terms alternately in this analogy. Because this would be the archetypal form of it.
So he's taking uh, A is to C as B is to D. And uh, I always find that curious. Because uh, this is the realm then of likeness. Right? And this is the realm of uh, pure model. Or a model copy. So it's not at all clear to me why he, he shifts, but uh, let's go on, okay? Um, it's always been a puzzle to me. I thought I'd just share it. I, I have a question. For those who know Greek, the order of the Greek um, seems like it's becoming is to being. And am I misunderstanding that? Oh, that's right. That's right. And Yes, keep going. And belief is to truth according to the Greek words, but I don't know if there's some grammar or well, point that may be made, but the order of the words are this not is to believe, uh, the business is to truth. Um, he switched them. Yeah. Um, and the way he talks... But it's the same, it's the same riddle, though. Um, We have to read become, becoming with the pros, that's the two. So literally he's saying to becoming, usia, and to believe, true. Did you hear that? Yeah. Is that, you mean that it's in that order? Yeah. That's becoming is to believe, uh, usia? No, no. To becoming, usia, is usia. If you want to read it, 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 you're saying becoming comes before Usia, but you can't just read becoming Usia. You have to read to becoming is Usia. There's a preposition in front of becoming. That so the analogy it. would be what? In English, it would be like how they translate it. Becoming, I mean, being is to Usia? No. I mean, be, becoming, being is to become. Being yeah. is to becoming? Yeah. Okay. Okay, jump ahead. Um, in the next paragraph. Socrates accepts them. Um, so, get our reader and uh, push one more step. Certainly, we have most cordially accepted your prelude. Can you do it louder, please? <clears throat> Excellent, Timaeus. We must, by all means, accept it as you suggest. And certainly, we have most cordially accepted your prelude. So now, we beg of you, proceed straight on with the main theme. Let us now state the cause wherefore... He that constructed it, constructed becoming and the all. He was good, and in him that is good, no envy ariseth, 
ever concerning anything. And being devoid of envy, he desired that all should be, so far as possible, like unto himself. This principle, then, we shall be wholly right in accepting, for men of wisdom as being above all the supreme originating principle of becoming in the cosmos. For God desired that, so far as possible, all things should be good, and nothing evil. Wherefore, when he took over all that was visible, seeing that it was not in a state of rest, but in a state of discordant and disorderly motion, he brought it into order out of disorder, deeming that the former state is an always better than the latter. For him who is most good, it neither was nor is permissible to perform any action save what is most fair. As he reflected, therefore, he perceived that of such creatures as are by nature visible, none that is irrational will be fairer, comparing holes with holes than the rational, and further, that reason cannot possibly belong to any part from soul. So because of this reflection, he constructed reason within soul and soul within body as he fashioned the all, that so the work he was executing might be of its nature most fair and most good, or most beautiful and most good. Thus, then in accordance with the likely account, we must declare that this cosmos has verily come into existence as a living creature endowed with soul and reason owing the providence of God, owing to the providence of God. This being established, we must declare that, that which comes next in order, oh sorry, that which comes next in order, in the semblance of which of the living creatures did the constructor of the cosmos construct it. We shall not deign to accept any of those which belong by nature to the category of parts. For nothing that resembles the imperfect would ever become beautiful. But we shall affirm that the cosmos, more than aught else, resembles most closely that living creature of which all other living creatures, severally and generically, are portions. For that living creature embraces and contains within itself all the intelligible living creatures, just as this universe contains us and all the other visible living creatures that have been, that have been fashioned. For since God desired to make it resemble most closely that intelligible, intelligible creature, which is most beautiful of all, and in all ways most perfect, he constructed it as a living creature, one and visible, containing within itself all the living creatures which are by nature akin to itself. Are we right then in describing the heaven as one? Okay. I think we did this paragraph once before. Yeah. Right? And, uh, Therefore, we should just be open up to any questions you want to make about it. Um, well, I still don't. I. St still have questions about him taking this over, taking the cosmos over, and that it wasn't created. That's right. I'd like to talk about that still. Well, but you have to, <laughs> you have to add something for people to talk about. It. Well, yes, that is not a creation out of nothing. Right. That's correct. So where did this... Uh, chaos come from. 
where did the carry on spring shape? What's the goal of this paragraph to the beginning, right? The first paragraph right there. What's the goal? To state the cause wherefore he that constructed it constructed becoming in the awe. Well, it's really not the cause, right? It's not the cause. Drop out the prime. I read it without it. Let us now state cause wherefore he that constructed it constructed becoming and the all. Okay. Um, what's the goal? Why is he doing what he's doing? Why is he doing what he's doing? steps he's taking. Uh, the steps are trying to, to uh, dramatize his goal. I mean, the steps he's making are to solve a problem. And I think this is certainly not a cosmology. A uh, cosmology means you're going to try to answer all of those great questions you have. I think the same question we raised before, maybe we should stop and raise it again. Uh, what's the last line in that paragraph? <clears throat> this then, in accordance with the likely, the likely account, we must declare that this cosmos has verily come into existence as a living creature, endowed with soul, owing to the providence of God. Mm -hmm. So, right, this cosmos has come into existence owing to the providence of God. Well, what would that mean? What would that mean? Try it. Okay. That God, that God was responsible for that? Well, here. I want the monitor we use the Like if your goal, if your goal is to uh, show the providence of God, then what kinds of circumstances and conditions would become necessary for you to be able to demonstrate the providence of God? Would it be the same as to generate the universe by itself? So look here. Under what conditions would it become clear? That there, ah, that 
that there is providence, that there is What conditions would it become clear that God's providence functions through the cosmos and the all? Are these the same? Under what conditions would it become clear that the cosmos follows a rational order in its development? Would, that, would you be doing the same thing with both questions? Seems likely. <laughs> well, since she said seems, we can get away with everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, providence means, come on, what does providence mean? Goodness. has to be an idea of goodness. Right? It proceeds to all to the degree to the degree that all are receptive to it. If I could put to the degree one is receptive to it. And that providence is beyond the intelligible. That's providence. want a rational order, you want to start with a couple of principles and from it to have everything proceed to explain how the everyday world came to be the way it is. From the Big Bang or from the first beginning. Would it be the same thing? Like you could have a, a description of the cosmos, as many are, without bringing in the idea of Providence, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. See, if this is a cosmological study, there are many big problems with it. And the biggest one is, why does he have so much room for man? You don't have to study man except in some loose way to talk about the development of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Now, like page after page after page, on and on. What do you do for this? Mm -hmm. Because what he's adding, the degree to
you now add, you know, there is a goodness that proceeds to all to the degree to which intelligent beings are receptive to it. Now, you have to talk about intelligent beings. And you have to talk about in some way it's going to come. And you have to start out with, good heavens, if there is a cosmos, when did it come in? So, here, you can't start with chaos. Because you'd want to explain how, why is there chaos? But here, would it make sense? Chaos is that no evidence of goodness. Mm -hmm. And so, if you start out with, hey, you know what? There's no evidence. Of Providence, good. Now let's see how it came in. So therefore, for this model, he's going to start with chaos, disorder, and now we want to see as he, as he brings order into it, where is the providence? Are you doing something the same or different if you're doing just a cosmology then? See, one word, right? What would happen if there is a providence? Okay, watch. What can we expect if providence? Then, what would you say? Jump in. Then what will happen in the universe? You should be able to see. Should you not? Beauty, love, truth. Right. All the big words. All the good ones. You need all the big words now. Right. You don't need truth, beauty, if you're doing a cosmology. Right. It would be interesting, but it isn't essential. Okay, go one more step. Come on, you're getting close. Mm -hmm. The three big words. Right. If it starts out with he has to start out with chaos, then what's going to happen in the universe? Order. It's going to go. Thank you. Order. Order. Got that? Say it again? Okay. He said that would show the principle of likeness because therefore goodness then would extend throughout the cosmos and therefore the uh, principal idea of this cosmology or so called cosmology of the time is, is likeness. Because if there were providence, then what did you say? It would go all the way down through everything, and therefore all things would be somewhat like the very nature of goodness. Is that right? Oh. Let me do that again. Oh. oh. Is that right? Therefore, the supreme principle, which all wise men agree, for nations, is likeness. Because if it does take place, everything will become, therefore a likeness will be a key concept in the entire cosmos. If it's going to be like him, all right, and it's providence of God, ah, finish it, thank you. Um, well, it just occurs to me that there's, there seems to be an implication that this is an ongoing process expressed through time. That's very important because one of the quotes in there is that it is an ongoing process, by the way, but I'll get it later. Okay. But the starting point is one of complete chaos. Yeah. Yeah. By implication, though, the end point, if there is an end point, or the highest point, is, is a point where um, the maximum amount of goodness can be expressed or manifested in the so what we're talking about is, is a kind of evolution 
it's going on. It's on the process. Yes. Yeah. See, the cosmology, well, in some cosmologies, all you need is an initial push, and then everything is automatic after that, disclosing itself in a variety of ways. Right, but like a, like not a seed. here, because you'd have to have some continuous function going on. The demiorgos is constantly doing the same thing that started the whole process. Yeah. But um, going back, do you find that curious? Now look, look, at, the, look at that paragraph they got for a moment. Um, you know, I, I know some people who look at this and uh, they say actually a uh, whole discussion I once had with Balboa on this line, and I should bring in his translation. Uh, but it really could also say, so let us say, the kind of coerce. Wherefore, he that constructed it, constructed becoming and the all. See, look here, when he adds this word, everything changes. Well, because the cosmology doesn't need all. It, all of the principles and philosophy behind creation is in all. Cosmology could be just simply what is the steps that started it from the beginning and proceeded to the end. All goes beyond it. Uh, devoid of envy. There's nothing better. Hey, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. He's not envious of anything. There's nothing better than him. There's nothing better than the demiurgos? No. Pardon? Is, is that, really, they're stating there's nothing better than the demiurgos? I'm not with it. Do <clears throat> I won't ask a rhetorical question. Okay. Okay, okay. okay, I'll put it straight. I thought the demiurgos was an inferior function to the good. It was like, well, it's kind of like... Uh, oh, that's true. Yeah, you know, there are four kinds of gods in the Greek world. And he's an efficient cause. He make, he's a um, uh, maker god. Yeah, he's a maker god. God the maker is the paradigm. Or being itself, or pure intelligence, or see, if, if the demiurgos has an idea that he's focusing on to create the universe, or bring, or bring order into the universe, then this has an independent existence. Because whatever you have is different than you. Therefore, that is God the maker. Is that the living creature? The demiurgos then makes things from a pattern. All artists make things from a pattern. Therefore, he's a maker God. But since that idea, or that paradigm, exists, there must be a cause for it. For anything that exists, there must be a cause. Therefore, beyond this is God. And theologically, of course, this is Uranus, uh, Kronos, and Zeus. And of course, then, to, co to complete the universe in the time is, uh, Zeus generates a lesser gods to complete creation. Therefore, we have four gods. So, yes, you're quite right. So, Pierre, the, the, is uh, the living creature, then, is the paradigm he's referring That's to? Right. Yeah. That's right. That's um, right. It's also the cosmos. Pardon? It's also the cosmos, is it not? No. no? no the cosmos is generated out of the paradigm. 
So is the cosmos not a living creature? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it but is. it's not an eternal living creature. And the same, well, let me change that. Uh, the difference between the, the paradigm that contains only eternal things, the cosmos contains things that are in the temporal Zen, including us. Um, so, according to this, what creates what creates that first disordered everything visible? How how does that come to be? It, it, it yeah, but could you just hold that from it? Just see if I can read it through with this idea, and see whether it fits. That's what I thought we'd do for a moment. Okay. Okay. Like. Yeah. Um, he just. He desired that all should be as far as possible like unto himself. Well, there's a providence of God, you're going to be like himself, then that's going to be in the same line of reasoning. This principle will wholly accept, you know, being right, accepted by men of uh, Phronesis. For God desired, so far as possible, all things should be good. Nothing evil. You don't have to have an idea of everything good in a cosmos. It's good. It has to be good. Okay, in order to do that, he took over what was visible, seeing that it was, uh, not, in a, it was not in a state of rest, but in a state of discord and disorderly motion. He brought it into order and said the better is far better, right? The order is far better than the latter. Better. Gooder. Better. Better to whom? At this stage, there's, there's the God looking out over chaos. There's no human beings yet. No. Uh, so... The God finds that chaos to be offensive, mm -hmm. so it's it's his his judgment that that's an interesting judgment. Yes, the judgments are going to show that he's going to draw on the idea of a cosmos as we go on. He's going to make all those kinds of judgments. <clears throat> that's what he's looking at, yeah. and he's yeah. saying. This is better than that. Yeah. And so I can do this, so he does it. Yeah, and he's doing it because it's better. Is that going in the same direction we're talking about? Yeah. Okay, the look here. Is better. Um, hey, you know what? Um, for him, <coughs> it was good. It either was... Uh, or, uh, uh, the only thing he can do is pr produce actions that are beautiful. <clears throat> Goodness and beauty. Ha! Huh. So the very acts are going to be beautiful. Now, you don't need this word with cosmology. You need it for goodness. And he's going to show you why. And if we just hold that for a moment, okay? Um, now look, see, now the same point you were making before. He's now stepping back and looking at things as if they already exist to make this argument for providence. <clears throat> he perceived that of such creatures as are by nature, visible, but he's thinking, they don't exist yet in terms of cosmology, but he's not in cosmology. He wants to show this. Why? Look what he's doing with it. He perceived that of such creatures as are by nature visible, none that is irrational be more beautiful, comparing whole with holes, than the rational. Ah, beautiful again, twice. Actually, four, three other times before this. Uh, so because of this reflection, 
He constructed reason within soul and soul within body. As he fashioned the all. Going on simultaneously. As he fashioned the all. So that the work he was executing might be of its very nature most beautiful and most good. What are the themes again and again that are coming up? Goodness and beauty. Goodness and beauty. Thus, in accordance with uh, the likely account, we must declare that this cosmos was verily come into existence as a living creature endowed with soul, owing to the providence of God, because the providence of God is how goodness penetrates all things. So, the backdrop of this providence, the whole work is on providence. The backdrop is, hey, he does, he perceives this, he perceives that. In the cosmos. Oh, I want to pursue. Oh, yeah, you know, I look at creatures, living creatures. I look over there. There's some creatures without reason. Huh? Creatures with reason. Hey, these are more beautiful than those. It's not sequential in any kind of cosmology. Very foolish cosmology. But the only question I have for you is whether or not it is whether we can make the case that the last sentence in that is establishing the cause for the time is. Yeah. Thus, conclusion. Mm -hmm. so in accordance can... with the likely kind, we must declare that this cosmos rarely could come into existence as a living creature died with soul, owing to the providence of God. This is all showing what? The providence of God. So, um, what kind of model? Hey, let me change it, okay? Take it out of cosmology. kind of model would show evidence or arguments for the existence of God's providence. Right? I'm always going to go back to that if that's, if that's where it's going. Yeah. Well, I was just, you know, thinking like what you mentioned earlier, comparing something like the theogony or the Bible. Um, at what point that's the idea of providence and uh, good and beauty mm -hmm. play a role in all that generation. And uh, mm -hmm. so what kind of model? I mean, there's only oh. a couple that really oh. develop the idea of providence. Yeah. Genesis, Genesis might try. Mm -hmm. That's right. Say it again. Genesis might try. But it sort of drops the ball. Uh -huh. hmm. Now, the question that was raised a short while ago about a living creature what is the living creature? 
Right. It's really, it should be, they're two living creatures, okay? <clears throat> it's really the intelligible living creatures. Yeah, who are they? <laughs> And then there is the uh, living creature. Right? They're different. Now, the intelligible is going to show us evidence. See, you can't have providence in this game unless you have something intelligible. <coughs> beyond intelligible, that's good. Can't have it, the only way. And that's why there's going to be a mean term between these two. And that mean term is going to be us, mankind. Because we share with all animals, <clears throat> but since we have soul in the right, noose in the soul, and <laughs> soul in the body, that allows us, therefore, to be the main term in these three terms. This is the main analogy. We have the lesser role but because of that. But soul is also a mean. Sure. It sounds like soul is also a mean. You have. Uh, you have reason and soul and soul in the body. Soul is essentially a mean, in other words, standing it between reason and body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More. Say more. I like it. Would you please encourage him to say more? <laughs> Give him the elbow. That's All right. right. All right. No violence. That's a good point. <laughs> Come on. So look, see. <clears throat> It's the we, yeah. But we shall affirm that the cosmos, more than aught else, resembles likeness most closely that living creature of which all other living creatures, severally and generically, are portions. For that living creature embraces and contains within itself all the intelligible living creatures just as this universe contains us and all other visible living creatures. Right. Us and all right. visible living creatures. We're the, because of us, we have soul and reason within it, and therefore we're the bridge to the intelligible. Not For God desired to make it resemble most closely that intelligible creature, which is the most beautiful, perfect. He constructed it as a living creature, one visible, containing within itself all living creatures which are by nature akin to itself. Ah! Look here. He desired to make it resemble most closely that intelligible living creature, which is the most beautiful. So, look here. Our question is this. Is that the paradigm? That's paradigm. What? Is he laying down the conditions, therefore, right, to make clear the very nature of providence in the cosmos? Curious work, if that's what he's doing. Does he explain how the everything visible is present in such a state of confusion? Like that, it doesn't fit the, it, it doesn't fit the likeness of the paradigm. Mm -hmm. If everything in the paradigm is ordered mm -hmm. and beautiful and symmetrical, and how perfect. is it that the visible living creature is in such disorder and what created it? If so, then, he has to have in this work a way that we can go from uh, 
and that's going to be Providence. What? So did he just kind of one day stumble upon a big confused mess? Disorderly motion. Not necessarily beings or he has to yeah, yes, in a way. See notes. He's going to say that man, mankind is a mess. Disordered, all the qualities. He's gonna have man, mankind. That's so where we are. It's gonna be a constantly re re emerging Belt. process of ordering from where we are. That's right. 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 And uh, so, like, this is perfect, beautiful. What, what would be an example of another intelligible living creature besides what's potential for man? That's what's so, an intelligible living creature? That's A. So important. Uh, See, um, of course, you raised it in terms of the plurality, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, if there are a set of things here right, that are intelligible, have a vitality, Right. And necessarily have some kind of activity. Activity of power. Right? And if there are many of these, and if these are eternal, that would be intelligible living creatures. Mm -hmm. Those are the ideas. Justice, symmetry, all these the uh, Knowledge, beauty, the big ideas. <clears throat> oh. hmm. Hmm. See the word, the, the 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 fun word that he chose is creatures. See when we use the word creature, we're over here, visible living creatures, yeah. creator creature. But metaphysically, these are the three nece necessities for any idea with a capital I. Justice, wisdom, knowledge, truth. Uh, wouldn't yeah. likeness be one of those? Sir? Would, wouldn't likeness be one of those itself? Or is likeness higher? Well, all of these ideas must share that. Therefore, they all are alike. And therefore, when someone lands there, that's what they experience. Wow. Rather curious work. And it's in paperback, too. Hey, we're working overtime. Look at this. Terrible. We started late. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Check out your hands. Thank you for the...